AgFix. Today's video is all about the rules lawyer. Dun, dun, dun. So I have played with a number of players who probably technically would be called rules lawyers. Some of them definitely in the rules lawyers the bad way, but a number of them actually were like the good rules lawyers and I enjoyed having them at the table. So I'm going to talk to you today about what kind of behaviors are kind of the bad rules lawyers behaviors and instead maybe some options for if you are a person who kind of leans towards being a rules lawyer, maybe ways that you can do it in a bit, a bit more of a like good lawful way. Oh, and if you like my t-shirt, keep an eye on our social medias because we have a very special announcement coming up. Before I get into anything else, what is a rules lawyer? A rules lawyer is usually thought of as a oftentimes player, could be a game master, that um, follows the letter of the law. So it follows exactly rules as written and kind of does not take into account any of like the spirit of the rules or anything else. And sometimes this can be done for that individual player or game master's personal gain in the game. So before I get into kind of how to do it right, let's talk about why the rules lawyer has such a bad rap and what uh, are the kind of bad behaviors of a bad rule lawyer. First of all, I think a rules lawyer can oftentimes be disruptive. Um, they can um actually other players or especially the game master and derail the momentum of the game, uh, especially if it's a matter where the game master is kind of making an on the flies ruling to keep things moving on. And the rules lawyer stops things and says, well, actually it should be this, this, or this. Um, sometimes this can result in like rolling a lot more damage than the game master was anticipating and potentially killing a player. Sometimes it might come out in the player's advantage, um, but ultimately it disrupts the game. They can also undermine the game master. Uh, as I said before, sometimes as a game master, you're making a decision on the fly. You don't want to stop to look up a rule. And so if somebody is constantly or even not constantly, but enough times chiming in saying, well, actually it should be this way. This is how the ruling is. No, that's not right. Then the game master's kind of leadership at the table gets undermined. Sometimes rules lawyers can also kind of be a individual who likes to optimize their character. And that's fine if you want to play your character optimized. But when the rules lawyer starts telling other players, this is what you should do, that's definitely problematic. Um, and it also just comes across as a bit of an a-hole um, move to constantly be telling other players what they're choosing to do is wrong and they should actually be doing something right. And I think that's what really comes down to is oftentimes a rules lawyer comes across as I know better and what you're doing is wrong in situations where it isn't always necessarily black and white. Um, sometimes it is, yes, this ruling there are clear rules for this and we went with slightly wrong rules. Somebody got something a little messed up, but oftentimes there are th things where it's like, well, is there a clear rule for something in this sit exact situation? And the game master might be being a little bit flexible because, you know, whatever is happening doesn't quite apply to rules as written, or they don't particularly like the way the rules as written is going to work out for the entire table. And then there's also like house rules and all of that, which can create problems if you do have a rules lawyer at the table table who wants to play raw. Now, as far as house rules, I think the way to kind of handle it is if you are somebody who you want to play rules as written, bring this up in like a session zero or early on and establish you know, talk with your table and come up with a consensus of what is going to work the best for everybody. And if you really are not going to be okay with any house rules, maybe find a table that is going to play exactly rules as written. A big thanks to all of our patrons, especially Alicia. If you want to support our channel, you can head on over to patreon.com slash rule for initiative and check out the perks of being a patron. Okay, so how do you rules lawyer in the good way? One of the first things is 
don't interrupt the game master. Don't stop them. Um, or if they're making a decision that's clearly like a decision on the fly, kind of let it go and then find an opportunity where there's a break. Um, you know, maybe you're taking, people are taking a bathroom break or it's at the end of the session. You can bring up, oh, hey, um, the ruling that you made for the fall damage, fall damage is actually on this page and it's, you know, specifically this. That's just an example, whatever specific rule it is that you're referencing. You can also offer to be the person who will look up those rules or to be the person that if the game master or another player is unsure how something um, works, they can turn to you and say, hey, uh, do you happen to remember what the rule is for this? This is something that's very easy to kind of bring up early on and a way that you might bring it up is not saying like, hey, you seem to be really bad at the rules. I'm really good at it. But instead offer it, you know, where you're pointing out the other person's flaw, but instead just highlight your strength. Say, I really enjoy reading the rule books and I have a really good memory for it. So I'm happy to be your reference if you need it for how specific thing rules work or to look something up in the book because I remember what section it is. So I'll be able to look it up really quickly. This is something, especially if you offer early on, um, probably your play, other players and your game, game master will end up taking you up on it. So you'll get to play, you know, the rules, how they're written, um, or how the table has agreed upon, uh, without kind of being that disruptive player. This is something I have really appreciated when I've been game mastering and had somebody at the table who had a really good memory for the rules. If we came into a situation where I just couldn't remember, I knew there was a rule for something, but I could not remember the specifics, I've been able to just turn to them and it's kept the momentum of the game going. It made the other player happy and it made me happy knowing that I had the correct ruling. <laughs> now, while I think the best way is to kind of offer those clarifications when asked, there can be times where you might want to kind of step in and say like, hey, I... I remember the rule for this or like, hey, you're you're doing something wrong, especially if it's a situation where like one of the player characters might die because a rule is being misinterpreted or it's a situ like a pivotal moment um, to what you're trying to accomplish in the game. If it's just something like somebody's trying to negotiate for something they're buying or a minor thing that's really not going to long term have a big impact, maybe those are the times to let the rules go and bring it up maybe after the fact. One thing that a few of the players I played with who have much better memory for the rules, who kind of fall into that good rules lawyer, is that they remind themselves that other people are not going to have their that same grasp of the rules. People play tabletop role-playing games for different reasons and find different parts of it enjoyable. Some players just aren't going to have a good memory for the rules. They might, you know, learn just enough so that they can play their character, but not all the extra stuff or not things that hardly come up. And if somebody does something that's kind of against the rules, it's probably not on purpose. Now, obviously there can be exceptions to this. There can be people who are purposefully cheating. Um, so if something is kind of consistently getting broken, that might be a situation to bring it up with maybe that player and or the game master uh, and discuss it, you know, talk to people. Um, but kind of just reminding yourself that uh, other people find other ways of enjoying the game and it might not be following rules as written is enjoyable for them might help you kind of grant that grace and find table uh, role playing with those kinds of players a lot more enjoyable. You can focus on playing the rules, can offer to help remember the rules and help other players if they want it, but you aren't going to be falling into kind of the bad rules lawyer area. And with that, I think Remember, people are going to play their characters differently than you necessarily would play them. This might mean choosing things that, you know, following just the rules is not going to be the most optimal, um, is not going to have the best, uh, most strategic outcomes, but it's how they enjoy playing their character. So this is a situation where, you know, you might offer, hey, if you want help figuring things out, I'm happy to, uh, you know, talk to you about the rules or help you pick what your next feats are going to be um, because I know the rules really well. 
And if they don't, they don't. Let them play their character the way that they want to play their character. So those are my suggestions, things that I have uh, found, as well as talked to a few other players of how they rules lawyer the right way. Have you played with a rules lawyer at your table? Are there things that you have noticed that um, you find disruptive or are kind of in the like bad rules lawyer uh, stereotype? And what are other, are there any other things that you have found that you know, somebody who has that really good grasp of grasp of the rules does that makes it more enjoyable for the entire table. Let's talk about it more down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we make videos here every week all about tabletop RPGs and our other geeky interests. And we'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye! We got the books, we got the gavel. Why do we have a gavel? Because of a play.